It was an incident that happened in the second half. The score was 2-2 and it was Brian and Burma of Brentford who was yellow carded for the the dive, if you like. Um, I'll be, I mean, I was there, Cass, and I'll be honest, as soon as I saw him go down, I thought, what are you doing? It, <laughs> even from my angle, I thought, that is never going to be a penalty and I don't know why you've done that, especially when you thought if you just maybe take a touch, you might go around Forster and you might be able to get yeah. a shot away. So uh, it was obviously fully deserved yellow card. Um, hopefully they will have a little word with him and say, come on, we can't be seeing that again. Because when we've seen that happen at Brentford, and we've called it. And, you know, I remember yeah. Aston Villa's Trezeguet, one of the, I would say that's one of the worst dives I've ever seen. That was last season. We were all, as Brentford fans, like joking and, and calling it out many times throughout that week because it was so embarrassing. And it's embarrassing when it's your player that does it. Yeah. So, like I say, I hope that the members of the Brentford team certainly have a little word with Brian and Burmo because we don't want to be seeing incidents like that. No, and um, it's quite funny, though, wasn't it? Well, I mean, in <laughs> retrospect, you can laugh, but obviously... <laughs> but what I would say, and, and David Coote was the referee, and, and, and brilliantly that he called that and, and gave that yellow card, but I was a little bit disappointed that moments before Matt Doherty had gone down in the box the other end exactly similar sort of situation mm. maybe not as as theatrical should we say as brian and burmo's um you know going down but i was surprised he wasn't also booked for simulation because the referee was right there and to me it was a very similar situation he threw himself to the ground so i thought that was the only thing mm. i was a little bit disappointed with the ref and the inconsistency but rightly so Brian and Burmo book because we need to see more punishments, don't we, for these oh, kind absolutely. of moments? Well, as penalties become more softer, which mm. they clearly do, I mean, I wasn't convinced that, you know, Bowen was a penalty against Arsenal. You yes. know, there's a, a minus, you know, piece of con yeah, minuscule contact between the two now. Mm. Uh, I, you know, well, this is where we are with pens, that players will try because if you're giving really soft penalties, you, they might give the, the softest one of all time. And, if Brian and Bumo was given a penalty, oh wow! You know. Yeah, it was absolutely ridiculous. I, I, and you, I mean, I think with the the Jared Bowen one, had the referee not given it, the VAR wouldn't have intervened because it wouldn't have been clearly no. obvious. So yeah, there's a, there is that. I suppose you could you could say with that particular penalty, but as it was, it was given. West Ham scored, but Arsenal yeah. were able to turn that game around. Um, I've me and you have had this conversation about penalties on numerous times. Yeah, and I keep saying to everyone where we are on penalties today. Where are we going to be in 10 years' time? If we keep going down this road of looking for the tiniest piece of contact and players going to ground so easily. Now, these guys train, go in the gym. They don't only do all their physical stuff. They go in gyms as well and do all the weights, and yet they go down, well, some of them like crisp packets. They float everywhere. You know, they just go down, you know, so easily. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't know where penalties will be further down the line. Well, it was an eventful game uh, at yeah. the lunchtime kickoff between Brentford and Spurs. Brentford went 2-0 up, 1-0 up at half-time, and then Ivan Tony scored the second for the Bees before Spurs fought back. And it was funny because I had some friends who were in the Spurs away end, and both of them were messaging me saying, at half-time, well done, three points coming your way, etc., etc." <laughs> and I said, it's early days. I always, because you have to be sort of like, mm. play it down, play it down. I was So I responded by going, it's early days. And in the back of my head, I'm thinking, I know Spurs. We've seen what Spurs are like this season. They always need to go a goal behind to get going. And mm. that's kind of what happened yesterday for them as well. Because <laughs> up until that second goal, I thought Brentford were kind of in control of the game. Uh, up and, and then we scored the second and then we sort of sat back and then Spurs just came at us and it was, yeah, yeah it was um How poor difficult. were the three at the back for Spurs? You know, really you look poor. at... I lot Tanganga had an awful game. Yeah, Longley as well yeah. and Eric Dyer. Yeah. Shank one for the corner Absolutely. that ended up being the goal. The three at the back look, the, in the central positions look all over the they place. They did have a difficult afternoon, yeah. certainly. Yeah. Two goals that you scored, both were flick-ons that were started because Ivan Tony beats Tandango in the air, which eventually begins to fall to Mbumo, mm -hmm. and he crosses and then eventually get it in the back of the net. Actually, and then yeah. uh, for Tony's goal was a set piece, was a flick-on again. Yeah, Tottenham got, flicks it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Twice they got done Spurs by flick-ons, uh, you know, that... You have to expect if one thing, if you can't win it, you try and make it be a ball that's not easily flicked on, so a player can take it along, and you know, take it into a space and then create something. And that they're not doing that Spurs very well, but they are the comeback kings. They keep doing what they're doing, and 
Well, there's no other team that have won more points from losing positions now than Spurs this season, hmm. which is quite incredible. But equally, must be so frustrating for Spurs fans thinking, oh, here we go again. We go a goal behind or even two, as it turned out. And, and we've got to then kick, we've got to kick on. We've got, and then it was Harry Kane that started the fight back hmm. with the first goal. Uh, maybe a word on Harry Kane after the disappointment of the World Cup, being able to get straight back onto the score sheet. Doesn't erase the memories, but it certainly helps to look yeah. forwards rather than backwards. Well, we know he's going to get goals. He's got an incredible mentality. I think that's clear for everybody. The big difference is, is when Tottenham's wing backs end up Perisic and and uh, Doherty. You know, first half they were quite deep. Second half, now they're chasing the game. They end up getting higher up the pitch, and it caused Brentford way more problems. That was the ultimately the difference of why they got back into the game. Mm. Yeah, it was eventful, but points were shared in the end between Brentford and Tottenham. It was a funny one as well. When we walked away from the game, you're sort of thinking, oh, 2-0 up, how have we let that slip? But if you'd said to us from, from Man City and Spurs, we were going to gain four points, yeah. we'd have laughed at anyone that had said that to us prior to those games. So for us to come away with four points... We're absolutely buzzing, as we would be as bees. So, yeah, <laughs> we were not, not too shabby, that one. Talk Sport Breakfast, waking you up Monday to Friday morning from 6am on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.